the Digi Podcast, Digital Trends in Supply Chain Management. Hello and welcome to our Digi Podcast. I'm Thomas Holzner from Siemens SCM Digi Network with the Digi Podcast, a podcast on digital and innovative topics for procurement in the future. When you think about supply chain management, flight dates are maybe not the first thing that come to your mind. But also in procurement, we have this case with negotiations. Not every party is involved as it should be or could be, and nobody knows each and every person. So it's more getting to know each other through a middleman, and it can be quite risky. So conflicts and miscommunication can happen. My guest today, Oliver Ballon, has maybe an idea how to sort this out. He was watching and experimenting on a new approach called HR Request for Quotation, or short RFQ. And how this could help to get us better, Oliver will explain in a second. So, hello Oliver, nice to have you here. Hello Thomas, thanks for the invitation. To make it easy, what's an HR RFQ? That's a good question, Thomas. I think it comes from the software development part where we already have the agile methods applied for a couple of years. So we cannot imagine a software project today without applying agile methods. And the idea is to apply those agile methods that are working in the software development also to the procurement processes. The customer and all stakeholders, all parties are working together, exchanging know-hows, collaborating, And in the end, everyone is in the same room, including the suppliers and maybe also two or three suppliers at the same time. Sounds very challenging and big disruptive approach. So how did you come across this RFQ? I think it was like five or six years back when I first got to know to an expert in this field who was inventing the Lean HI procurement method. And I was thinking, okay, where should we apply it? And when we see the current world, our current business world, all topics get more complex. Also in the in the value creator aspects, we have different dimension to balance in future tenders. And I think that is a way how we can solve the complexity. We have already a successful pilot within Siemens It was one of my colleagues, Rodrigo, from Siemens US, who did a pilot in applying those agile methods on the tender process for IT services. What is the result out of this or what's the possible impact on Siemens SCM overall? I think there are three topics to mention. One you already mentioned in the beginning, which is the blind date. So we go from blind dates to real engagement and collaboration. So all the parties, all the cross functions are talking into one room and solving the problems together. Secondly, it's from strict specifications where we sometimes maybe over specify topics to open innovation and asking the suppliers for their ideas to solve the problems. And thirdly, we spend a lot of time in email ping pongs to align topics and the agile RFQ method can promise quick results because everyone is in the same room and exchanging the ideas and solving problems. Sounds really great. And uh, if I cheat a little bit, I was told from you and Rodrigo that you reduced the lead time from two months to one week. And I think that's impressive. So this is a new thing for SCM at Siemens. And you did the extra mile because you did something new. You asked some stakeholders in advance. So what is your feedback on the idea and what's the feedback or what were the challenges when you wanted to set up the idea? I think the feedback at the end was very positive. In the beginning, I think when you are burning for a tropic, uh, so to say, when you are very convinced of something and all the exchange is only in, in your head, it's like a, like a head cinema. You are talking uh, to yourself and seeing, okay, where are maybe some obstacle in, in this concept and you are just seeing everything like with positive aspects only. Then you start to talk to the first colleague, for example, and um, getting some feedback. And then it's like, Oliver, okay, sounds interesting, but how can this work in the practice? And I think that's, that's something what needs to be assured that uh, you need to explain the topic quite well. And it's important to convince colleagues to also go this journey with you together. So this would be the details, how you set it up for this specific case. Are there any tips for someone who wants to advance their personal topics or teams? 
How do you think it's a good approach to do this? For the colleagues of Siemens, like internal colleagues, we have the STM Digital Network. That's a great area, a great network to exchange ideas and drive new topics. For everyone outside of Siemens, we have created a new LinkedIn group. It's also called STM Digital Network and you can just uh, request uh, access and we can talk about new ideas in, in procurement. I think it's important to have freedom in your daily work because when you are overbooked with a lot of meetings and when you are only focusing on your, your daily work, you don't have time to think about new topics and maybe also technology or methods that can improve and help you in the future. So that's maybe like an advice to the managers out there to reserve some time of the colleagues to think of new ideas to really drive all the topics that are beyond their daily life and daily working mode. I think, Oliver, that was a nice and great summary. I know Oliver now some several years. I would describe him as a very experienced young one. Maybe I'm the chaotic or wild old one. So he's supporting the team extremely well. And he was the guy who said, oh, I'm interested in the topic. I want to go ahead. Why did you do this? So now I'm coming to my last but not least question. Who is Oliver? I think I'm a creative, fundamentally optimistic person. And I like to drive new topics. I like to connect people and ideas and to break down silos and maybe also to do sometimes things differently. I'm also interested in technology and it's great to see all this development, what is currently going on with, for example, ChatGPT or all these electronic vehicles, uh, what are existing. And privately, I would say that I'm a minimalist, so to say. I have a tick every year in, in January. I count all my stuff at home and currently it's like 1,900 items for two people and uh, the target is lower, but uh, it's hard to sort some things out, but uh, I'm on the way. I think this click is amazing because I think I'm more like the opposite and uh, I could need your help for sorting out. <laughs> Maybe we make a plan on this in the later stage of the life. Thanks a lot. I really enjoyed it again to, to work with you together. This time totally different. And by the way, uh, Oliver organized short time ago a huge workshop regarding HIRFQ with a tremendous success. Maybe you have some insights for our listeners. What was your main takeaway? The main takeaway from the workshop, I think we were first focusing only on procurement colleagues to be invited. And it was quite obvious that it's necessary to invite also other stakeholders because the whole organization is connected and we can only bring things forward when we do it together. So again, a pure cross-functional mindset. Thanks a lot, Oliver. From my point of view, amazing, the podcast and also the workshop and also HR in the future. If you have any questions regarding HR, Digi Network, procurement, you can join our newly set up small Digi Network LinkedIn group. Christiane, Zina or somebody else will give access if you want to. And here you can meet Oliver and some other members of the Digi Network to exchange your ideas. I hope you enjoyed this HR episode of the Digi Podcast. If you have questions or if you want to find out more information about the network, you can reach out also to our internet page, siemens.com slash Digi Network. I'm looking forward to having you as a listener at our next episode. Yours, Thomas Holzner. The Digi Podcast. Digital Trends in Supply Chain Management.